Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us. This is still Good Morning Kenya. I am Jade Wamboy. Today we're talking about the future of education and with us in studio this morning, rather the future of learning. With us in studio this morning, we have Brian Masinda, who is a graduate and beneficiary of Allison Learning Platform. And we also have Mike Ferry, who is the CEO and founder of Allison.com. Now, just picking up from where we left off before we, you know, we took this commercial break, and let me just come back to you, uh, Mike. Um, we were looking at the aspect of um, uh, I lose my train of thought now before we get back to that let me come to you uh, Brian you know um, looking at the fact that you went through the course and you had already been to school got out of school didn't get a job immediately came to this uh, platform and got to do this course that sort of gave you that competitive edge over others when it comes to your employability is this something you would advise other graduates to actually venture into as opposed to just waiting and um, applying for jobs applying for jobs and waiting to be called to one of these jobs by virtue of having gotten a degree yes one thing is when you go to an interview when, when you want a job and you go for an interview they always ask you what you've learned in school. So my first interview, I was asked what I, I learned in school. Yes. And then my friend took a, a course in Diploma in Hospitality and Tourism Management mm -hmm. and finished. And when she went for an interview, she was asked exactly what was on that course. So it does not only just give you a competitive edge, it gives you the knowledge you mm -hmm. need. Like, the people who are writing these courses, the, the hospitality courses, the fashion courses, their chefs and SMEs are subject matter experts, people who've been in that field for a long time. So they are giving you what they would ask you in an interview. And literally what, what you go there when you're training, that's what they're teaching you. So you'll be surprised. It won't hit you immediately, but one month, in, two months into the job, you'll say, oh, this actually helped me. I'm here now. So it's all, it's all about what you want mm -hmm. and it helps. Yes, it's actually the truth. I don't know how to tell someone it's actually the truth, but it is the truth. It's one thing online that will help you. As yeah. opposed to just yeah. waiting to get a job. Just waiting to get a job. In the meantime, you could be learning a new skill. If you can spend one hour on Instagram, you can separate it, make 30 minutes on Instagram, 30 minutes on Addison. Practicality. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, let me come back to you, Mike. Mm -hmm. And um, Alison, for the most part, has been used by individuals who mm -hmm. interact, want to gain a new skill, um, gain some knowledge, go onto the online platform, do a short course, get your certification, and you're good to go. Mm -hmm. But now looking at organizations that might want to, you know, upskill their employees or have some of these online platforms brought onto their curriculum. Is there a facilitation for such when yeah. it comes to orga bigger organization and entities? Yeah, well, a absolutely. And there's an extraordinary opportunity for any size of a business. So you said big businesses, but even a small business. Mm -hmm. So uh, on the Allison platform, what you can do now is we have a free LMS. Now, an LMS is a learning management system. Okay. Mm -hmm. So essentially, e even if you're a small corner baker bakery and you have five staff and you want them to know how to make the croissants in the morning. Yeah. You can actually go on Allison, you create your own videos, you create and you put it up and you can create your own course. And then every time you hire new staff, you say, okay, you can you can join the front the team, but first go off and do a course. So that you're not constantly teaching people everything, right? Mm. And and it, that's entirely free. So then you can you can have your own group and then not only can you assign them the croissant making course, right? You can say, okay, if you're working in a small business or in a small shop, you should know the basics of customer service, yeah. right? You should know the basics of accounting. You should know the basics of th this and that. Why, you know, if the courses are free, why shouldn't you ask your staff to do it? So that's just the small company. But even when a larger company, you know, it's a huge it, 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 around the world today. Mm. The most of the companies that actually provide learning and training to their staff are fairly large because they see it as a budget issue. It's very expensive to do yeah. it. Okay, but with Allison we completely pulled the rug on under that. There is no need to be charging extra for learning management systems. On Allison, you can go on as a company and you can create a, a group, you can put your, com your, your staff onto the group, and then you can sign any of the 4,000 courses that you think are good for your business, and then you can monitor the, tr the, the progress. You might assign a course to a particular person and say, okay, I want that done in two weeks. Then, then they get a reminder, two weeks coming up, you haven't completed, you might have done 80%. 
finish it. And then somebody, uh, the, the manager, or the, or the owner of the company, or the HR manager can just review that. All of this is entirely free. So essentially what we're doing, what we did for individual learning, or what we started to do 15 years ago, today we're just... Or in the last few months what we're starting is for organizations yeah. is giving them the same opportunity why should a small company not be able to train their staff like larger ones Allison levels the playing field between companies that way so uh, it, then it, what it does is it, it encourages every employee within within a company to to, to embrace learning mm -hmm. and it, it encourages every HR manager to to make their own team more productive because it doesn't cost them any more money so there's a revolution going to happen here, and uh, hopefully we're starting it. And what's the average um, course duration from the over 4,000 courses that yeah. you have to offer? On average, what is the shortest time period that you're looking for um, a particular course to the ones that take the longest time okay. frame? Well, going back to YouTube, instead of, uh, in comparison with YouTube, in Alison, courses are very defined. Yeah. So on Alison, you either do a certificate or a diploma pretty much the two. You can have an advanced diploma, but very few courses are long enough that we would say it's an advanced diploma. To do a certificate will take you, the course on average, for the average learner around the world, would be somewhere between an hour and a half and two and a half hours. Right, it's a certificate. We, we noticed from our own research many years ago that people like a little clap on the back <laughs> when they go an hour and a half to two and a half hours. It was a natural type of a, 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 a time. So yeah. we put it, that's our certificate. And most of the courses on the platform would be certificates. All right, the, the higher up though is the diploma. So a, a diploma is somewhere between nine and 11 hours. You won't do it in one sitting. You won't mm, do it in a week. People just down. don't have that time. Yeah. So it takes a number of weeks uh, to do an Allison diploma. Most people it would do an Allison diploma over a month a month period and then of course you would have your assessment of course as you do it you have to remember all the stuff that you you learned at the from the very first to the to the last module that you you're studying but that's how it's broken down mm -hmm. an Allison certificate and an Allison diploma and then on occasion an Allison, uh, an advanced diploma where of course it's just particularly long there are some uh, subjects which just naturally lend themselves to saying, look, you really need to study 15 hours or 16 hours to get something out of this. Uh, but that's, that's what they are, certificates, diplomas and advanced diplomas. It allows for someone to tailor it into their daily routine and schedule to allow for enough time to study yes. and still go about your day. Yeah, that's the beauty about online. Yeah. Like 65% of all of the learning on the Allison platform worldwide is via a mobile phone a smartphone and uh, you know it, it's becoming affordable for everyone if you look at the statistics from the United Nations as to per capita income around the world and you look at some of the poorest countries uh, even the poorest countries you can get a phone uh, deal per month that will easily be affordable um, yeah. like uh, India you know you know in, in India for four dollars a month you can have an enormous amount of data downloaded in a year and that and that type of technology is going right across Africa so the phone is our is just a you know we, we all we all know that you we all use our smartphones but it, it is revolutionary in that way in terms of how it can access you to and empower you through education and self-knowledge all right. Now, yeah. Brian, looking at the perception that we have about um, getting a university degree or going to school for a diploma or a certificate for that matter, as opposed to the online platform where an hour and a half <coughs> or two hours, I can have a certificate. So in a month, I can have four or five certificates. Looking at this perception shift that needs to be there when it comes to getting people to understand, it's not just about a degree, but the quality that comes from it. What do you think can be done, and especially among the younger people, to appreciate that just because it's a short course, it doesn't mean it is of less value compared to a degree, because we have so many people wanting to do degrees over short courses. Well, doing a degree is not bad, it's good, but also doing a short course is not bad, it's good. But the late president of Kenya, Moi Kibaki, introduced free education in Kenya. And look at how good that helped us. Everyone has benefited from that free education, because mm -hmm. I remember I was in class six when he introduced free education in Kenya, and it really helped. Like, it's helped a lot of people. People might not know it, but free education helped, and this is what Alison gives you gives you free education and it's never too late to learn something once you once you have something once you know something once you've studied something it sticks with you it never goes anywhere mm -hmm. so free education is what is being offered by Alison mm -hmm. it was offered by our late president Mwaiki Baki rest yeah. him in peace mm -hmm. and you want to help yourself you want to be better mm -hmm. take a course 
take a course. Yeah, he should tell you how many Africans. <laughs> I, I've been trying to tell him. He should tell you how many Africans. Well, bef before I get yeah. to that, Jenna, yeah. you know, I was talking earlier before we came on. It was just, you know, Ireland today is a wealthy country, no question about it. But my father grew up uh, in the 1930s with going to school with no shoes. It was a poor country. And what changed was education. Mm -hmm. There is nothing that can change uh, the destiny of a country than, uh, than adherence and uh, embracing of, of education. So there's one thing that's exciting about Africa. If you go to uh, being in Kenya or Nigeria, where we have a lot of learners, South Africa, it's just there is an intense interest in education, in learning, in empowering yourself and developing your own skills. So it really is only a matter of time. You know, I, I, you know Africa will be, will be where Ireland is today. It's just a matter of being patient and putting in the work. Mm -hmm. Because the one thing that we haven't said about, Brian needed to have the motivation to sit down and say, you know what, I'm going to improve myself. And, and that starts with the perceptions that we have when it comes yes. to um, short courses. Because I'm telling you, yes. this is something that I have personally seen. People have a certain perception about a short course over a degree. Yeah. People value a degree over a short. And not to say that a degree okay. is bad. I have a degree. I value that. But over okay. time, you also understand that short courses also can yeah. take you... Um, um, a mile further. Yeah. Go, go, you have to go back to the employer. At yeah. the end of the day, what's college? Most people are going to college so that they can get, get a job. So forget, forget about that for a minute. What does the employer want to know? The employer wants to know how, what do you know and how smart are you? Because mm -hmm. what you know is only going to be a fraction of what you will need to know once you get into the job. It's only a small, most people would say 5 to 10% of, of, of knowledge is what you, you come into a job. The rest is you learn fairly quickly. So what an employer really wants to know is not that you went to a particular college mm -hmm. or a college you so much or that's you know it, it's really how much do you know and tell me and, and also relevant uh, relevant skill and timely skills a lot of things change yeah. particularly in technology so you mentioned Instagram a couple of times so what if you were a marketer on Instagram well I'd, I, I won't want to uh, if somebody comes into me on a course and say oh I'll manage your Instagram account but they have a course that they did two years ago not interested <laughs> I want to know that you did a course six months ago if you go to a college you can be sure most colleges around the world the courses they're teaching are three and four and five years old on an online mm -hmm. platform if there's like we do this all the time when COVID came Within, within two days of COVID being announced in China, we had courses in English on COVID. We translated into 70 different languages, including about 20 different African languages, and we had that done in four weeks, four or five weeks. Colleges can't put up. They cannot compete with on the, the speed and the accuracy of, of online platforms. And how things change. And how everybody gets involved. For instance, with COVID, like particularly, I think we did six languages in Nigeria, all volunteer driven. We just put it out there. There were so many doctors in Nigeria. Who, uh, we, we didn't, obviously it's a sensitive thing, so we only asked Alison learners who are doctors, tell us who you are and come on board. And, and they all came on board because we have so many millions of people. You can, we, there was 800 doctors around the world uh, put up their hand and say, I, I'll, I, will transfer, I will translate the course into my language. Mm -hmm. So it's just the speed that you can do things with online and also to recognize that the workforce is changing and that the, the skills that you need for the workforce are going to change all the time. You need to keep up. Everyone needs to continuously be a learner. This idea that you went to college and oh, I'm set for life and I'm set for the... No, that's not the case anymore. Mm -hmm. You must keep up. You must create a learning habit and if you're listening and you're watching and you haven't done a course in a long time I'd say to you you're getting rusty <laughs> get sharper go, f go figure something that you like and, go and study especially it. if you want to progress yeah, it won't take that long and it will cost you nothing all right. Now, this now that you've mentioned the pandemic, you know, for the past two years, a lot has changed for so many people. Yes. And mental health and wellness is yes. was at the center of all of this. And given you are offering this platform to offer this uh, knowledge and skills, the aspect of mental health and wellness and well-being, is it also being factored as you are looking to transfer all this knowledge? Yes. Also remembering that these people also need a healthy mental space to work. Yeah. Well, I'm delighted you mentioned that because I, in my briefing notes to you, I don't think we mentioned it. And we have uh, uh, mental health and well-being uh, features on the platform. So if you, uh, what we do with our learners is we ask them every quarter, every, every three months, mm -hmm. we ask them, how are you doing? You know, because a lot of people are working remotely. A lot of people aren't talking to people. So you say, how are you doing? Go do a test. So what we do is we ask them a, a bunch of questions. How are you feeling about your work? How are you feeling good about yourself? How are you feeling about the work you're doing? Do you feel that you're getting support? Yeah. There's a whole lot of questions that would uh, a, a psychologist uh, works with us 
to, to, to write up. So we can, we can essentially assess mm -hmm. where you are in terms of mental health and well-being. And what we do is we issue, every quarter then, we remind people saying, you know what, uh, uh, three months ago, you, you did our, our uh, mental health and well-being uh, test. Yeah. See where you are today. Are you in a better place? Or are you in a worse place? And if you're in a worse place, what are you going to do about it? And how can we help you? you know, because the one thing about online learning as well is that when you complete a course, you know, we'd, we've done research, 88% of people who complete course says that it improves their confidence mm -hmm. and 93% says it encourages them to learn further. So it's a very, very positive thing mentally to learn online because you feel good about yourself. And when a course is free uh, and it's short, at least you get to the end and you say, ah, I did that. I did something today Maybe or I did something this week. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and what's the next thing I'm going to learn? It is, in, it is contagious. Uh, th this, I, I'm, I'm in East Africa for, for three weeks and I'm going to Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda. And, and the highlight of what I'm doing is meeting with Alison graduates. And I'm meeting with a bunch uh, later on today uh, here in Nairobi. And uh, that's the wonderful story. It's just feeling. It's not just how these people have improved in terms of their employability, but also their mental health, their self-confidence, yeah. their self-esteem. Learning does that. And it's interesting that you bring that up because you know, just looking at the brief, you had mentioned that. Alison has morphed over the years from just being a learning platform to an empowerment platform. Yes. Was this part of the end goal or is this something that you saw coming as a result of offering these free courses to people and people actually taking them and completing them yeah. and coming back? Yeah, I, I think it's part of the original vision. Yeah. However, you need to recognize that uh, even though technology goes very quick, human behavior is quite slow. So sometimes <laughs> it, it takes us a long time to change our habits. Yes. Okay? We all agree. <laughs> so, so, so it takes a while. For the, when, once you get people online learning and then you ha get them to take tests, look at, all, look at what we know about Allison learners and look where the next step for us is to be able to... So we have uh, tens of millions of people on the platform. We know... You know, we know what they've learned. We know what they, what the prior learning is because they tell us. We know mm -hmm. where their psychometric status is. We, we can then, what we do on the other side is to offer them employment. We can say to employers saying, who are you looking for? You know, and we, and we can tell you exactly who we have on our database that fits that. And then we introduce you. And we can do also do that for free. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, and why not? Because the thing is, we can do it. You see, say for, take a course. Mm. If I create a course and it's digital, the marginal cost of sharing it with you, for us, is next to zero. It, it really is. If I create a learning management system that I, uh, that I allow companies to, to manage and monitor their learners, you know, once that software is written, the marginal cost of sharing it is next to zero. Okay, and so and and then the whole thing is when you build a platform and you introduce people and you use algorithms and you use the latest technologies of artificial intelligence, machine learning. This is something that we do in Allison. You think of us as so. Brian has talked about sub subject matter experts, but if you come inside Allison, you will find loads of engineers. You'll find a lot of data analysts. This is what you, that's, this is. What we run a big platform, so it's all about data. Mm -hmm. It's also about, all about matching, saying with Brian, what's the next course that Brian might study, and can we help him figure out where what he should do? Course can we entry. help him figure out what the next jo job opportunity is, yeah. and can we help his mental health, uh, me mental health and well-being as he's doing that? So Alison becomes a lifelong partner, where you set up your profile and you, you go on a journey, and we go on the journey with you, constantly providing, and we never we don't have to ask you to pay because while you're studying a course, ads will come up, but you can ignore them. But we make enough money out of that to be able to provide all of that service and more. All right. Now that brings me to the employment aspect. You know, you had mentioned you have a workforce of 200 <coughs> yes. across the world. Yes. Looking at the African and the Kenyan space specifically, because yes. uh, Brian had mentioned they're both African and uh, foreign uh, subject matter experts, SMEs. Yes. You know, when you say SMEs, it means a whole different uh, thing here in the oh, Kenyan space. Okay. Yeah. But looking at the employment also uh, opportunities that you're offering for some of these subject matter experts in the Kenyan space and from what you have seen, how, how is that looking? Okay, so uh, we would have uh, a number of pu publishers uh, from Alison. There's quite a few publishers based in Kenya. Mm -hmm. They train online. Actually, Brian has done some of the introductory courses to becoming a, a publisher on, on the platform. So we definitely have employment opportunities for it to become a publisher. You need to go online. You need to do a couple of courses. Uh, and once you pass them, you become eligible that we will consider and we will bring you on a pathway to train you so that you can work with us on courses. Mm -hmm. the, the thing is that if you're creating a course on basic maths or... 
uh, basic geography or something like that. An academic in Kenya, uh, a Kenyan person who's a professor in that, can write the same course as somebody can do in California. So knowledge isn't precious of country. You know, there are enough academics, enough people with subject matter expertise in Kenya mm -hmm. to, to write scripts for the entire world, right? It is, and, and that goes for every country, right? But what I'm talking about is the decentralization of knowledge. Yes. You know, it is not America and the UK and Ireland that has all the knowledge today. Mm -hmm. you know, universities and experts in Kenya are as good as anybody else. They can create as many courses as well. And also when they, when they create courses they're not just creating for the Kenyan market they're creating it for a global world market we have some I was in Pakistan in February we have one of our top publishers worldwide is based in Pakistan he is making a lot of money you know uh, I mean in the hundreds of thousands of euros per year publishing courses from Pakistan he, his costs are negligible because where he's based and you think and, and his expertise is something that is a global standard mm -hmm. around the world but the fact is he's he's based in a developing country but he has world-class expertise okay there is world-class expertise in Kenya we just need to access it and yeah. share it with the world so no country can, can say to itself oh we don't have those people every country has smart people every country has experts on things that they can teach the world on so everybody can be part of this revolution and it's not to be waiting for the Western world the tools are there you can learn to be a publisher you can publish for free on Alison you can start making money and actually that's another aspect of Alison which is a little unusual is that we have a lot of people just making a lot of money on Alison and they're not producing courses at all they're setting up as affiliates they just introduce Alison to other people and they immediately get 20% of the revenue that we make uh, for introducing them so that is a huge thing worldwide. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's rapidly becoming one of our biggest sources of new learners is people introducing us and they get a small, f they get a small payment. And when you're introducing, if you're based even in Kenya, you can, you can introduce us to people in, in the United, United States. You don't have to be introducing us to people online in Kenya. Why would you do that? If you introduce people to us in America, they're worth a lot more to us. But you can do that from Kenya, and a lot of people are doing that. And there's actually weekly who's asking, what are the requirements to become um, a trainer on Allison? So a subject matter expert. A subject matter yeah. expert. Uh, well, there's a couple of different jobs, right? So if you're a subject matter expert, you really have to show us, you know, tell us, well, tell us about your expertise. Why yeah. would somebody learn from you? Okay, so uh, th the first thing that we'd ask people, though, to do is to get to know the publishing tool. Because the reason that we can operate uh, for free is that we, 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 we operate in a very lean way. We try not to, if, if there's costs that can be borne by the publisher, then the they budget. put in their time, yeah. they learn. So if you want to be a publisher, the first thing you do is learn how to use the tool. So you go on and you do those two free courses like Brian did, and then you become eligible to become a, a publisher. Then uh, during that process, you tell us what you want to create courses on. Okay, and, and we look at that and we're saying, okay, why? And why would somebody do your course? We, we ask you, you know, and we compare it then with other, other publishers around the world that want to create courses on the very same thing. And mm -hmm. we say, well, it, you know, who, who, who's, who, who has the strongest case here? It's not about you coming and just wanting to make money as a publisher. No, so quality is absolutely yeah. important to us. And, and we, would, we would peer review all courses. So it's not just a case of you saying, say for instance, you were, uh, there's a crop in Kenya that is unusual to Kenya and a, a certain farmer knows how to grow that well. Well, I would, you know, you would guess to, the begin, to begin with that that person knows stuff that others don't know in other countries. However, when they create, create the course, what we would do is turn around and say, Okay, now introduce us to people who can also confirm to us that that's a good course. Mm -hmm. And we would do that with every course. So it's, it's not a free for all. Uh, if you get to become a subject matter expert on Alison, you will have been vetted. All right. Yeah. Now, as we close this conversation, let me start with you, Brian, very briefly, looking at the future of learning and where we're moving as a global population, embracing the online platform for, you know, just as a source of knowledge and somewhere we can gain the skills, very briefly. Well, tech, tech, people, are, people are getting employed out of office. People are working in Kenya and selling mm -hmm. things in America. So technology is changing a lot of things. And what someone once told me, if you do not accept change, change will change you. And you never want change to change you. Because mm -hmm. when change changes you, you won't like it. Okay. So accept change. When it's time for you to change, just, just learn something. All right. Okay. Also, Mike, you know, just very briefly when it comes to embracing the changes that are coming with technology and moving from the traditional way of gaining knowledge and skills that we're used to to actually embracing the online platform. Yeah, it, it, it's that we need to look at the world a little differently. Is that in, in the world 
that we used to know everyone was a learner, but today everyone's a learner and everyone's a teacher too. Everyone can share what they know. Yes. So we need to get used to that. And also we need to recognise that work, work, the workplace is about lifelong learning. Mm. And if you're not learning online and continuously, then you're, then you're going behind. You're going to be left behind. Mm. All right. That brings us to a close of this conversation. A very fantastic point to actually close it. We have been speaking with Mike Ferrick, who is the CEO and founder of Allison.com. Thank you so much for making time to be with us. Glad to be we here. also have been speaking with Brian Masinde, who is a graduate and beneficiary of Allison, which is a learning platform. Thank you so much, Brian. Thank you. With that, we want to say goodbye, but be sure to join us again tomorrow morning. For now, do enjoy the rest of your viewing. I am Jane Boy.